The thing with these techniques is that they are not obvious, but you will not believe the impact they make. Today, my friends, I will guide you through a five-step journey to crafting 4K or even 8K visual masterpieces. We'll uncover the do's and don'ts, and I will share some invaluable tips and insights. For Checkpoint, we are downloading Real Cartoon Realistic. This is one of the best models here on Civit AI for semi-realistic images. Also, we will use this fantasy style aura, which will infuse our images with mesmerizing fantasy effects. Last, but certainly not least, we are enhancing our images with this detail aura, a tool designed to significantly boost detail richness. Returning to Automatic 11.11, I came prepared. Close-up image of a female druid in leather armor, sitting on a rock, casting a nature spell, smiling. I also included the Laura Seer with a strength of 0.8. We start with the maximum resolution of stable diffusion 1.5 in 768 by 768. But hey Chris, why not jumping directly to a 60 by 9 resolution like 768 by 432? This is tempting of course. However, low resolution sacrifice detail you will miss later on. I will soon reveal a far superior approach. Set your sampling steps to 30 your sampler to DPM++ to MKRS and your batch count to 8 images because we want to have a nice selection. Also, don't use high res fix. This is crucial, I cannot emphasize it enough. Later in the video you will learn how professionals upscale. Now press Ctrl Enter to render. Let's see what we got. I like this image already. This is interesting, especially with the horns. Wow, this image with the portal is great. Love it. I like the hound here in the background very much. And this here is just magnificent. There's some real crazy nature spell going on. These are all great. But for the sake of demonstration, this image here will work the best. What I do now doesn't make any sense at first, but trust me, it will. I save my image to disk, by clicking the save icon and then click on it to download. We send our image over to the image to image tab by clicking this button. This is a promising start, but so far we've just scratched the surface. For this next step, we need ControlNet. To be precise, we need the ControlNet inpainting model. You can find it at this URL. Just ensure to download both the YAML file and the PTH file. And while you're at it, grab the tile model too. You will see this game changer in a later step in action. If you have no idea what I'm talking at the moment, watch this video first and then come back afterwards. Our poor druid is missing an arm as you can see, and we are going to fix this now with inpainting. If you haven't used ControlNet inpainting, prepare to be amazed. Hit the inpaint button and give it a moment to load. Then select the appropriate brush size and paint over the area you wish to alter. Here's where it gets exciting. Unlike the usual method of changing the inpaint area to only mask, we will let ControlNet take the reins. No need to adjust. You don't even need to change the prompt. Make sure your sampling method and steps are the same as before. Prepare for some variation by setting our batch count to 4. We will leave the denoising strength untouched for now. Dive into the ControlNet dropdown, activate it and filter by inpaint. Select either inpaint global harmonious or inpaint only plus llama for the preprocessor. Each of them does wonders in its way. Ready? Let's render. Behold! The magic of ControlNet. We will take this image here. Although the hand isn't perfect, I've got another trick up for that in my sleeve. I will teach it to you when we are progressing our journey into upscale territory soon. Now send the image back to image to image. You can sure fix a lot of things with inpainting, but one thing apart from hands where stable diffusion stumbles upon is when it comes to text. Here is where this week's sponsor shines. Storia Lab by Storia. Their toolbox is impressive, but it's their Textify tool that truly captures my fascination. And here's why. You can fix any spelling mistake made by AI image generation, all while preserving the original art style. Simply upload your image, create a text box over the area in need, and type in the correct text. Once you hit apply, the AI springs into action, generating multiple versions of the corrected image. Isn't that impressive? 
Signing up is effortless and they even welcome you with free credits. Storia also boasts an impressive cleanup tool designed to seamlessly remove any undesired elements from an image. Taking this Bioshock inspired image as our canvas, we simply highlight the unwanted figures using a brush, signaling the AI what to erase. Hit apply. The result is a remarkably cleaned up image. As for Storia pricing, it strikes a balance between affordability and unlimited creativity. Consider the immense value this brings to your workflow, especially when collaborating with clients on projects. I cut you a sweet deal of 10% of your existing subscription for the first six months. Just write a mail to founders at storia.ai. Thanks again to Storia for sponsoring this part of the video. Now. Prepare to be amazed as we elevate our work from its current state to something extraordinary. We are boosting our resolution to 1368 by 768 to achieve a 60 by 9 aspect ratio. Set the denoising strength to 0.9 and yes, you heard that correctly. The rest of the settings can stay the same. Here's where the true magic unfolds. Activate our unit and check the upload independent control image option. We will upload the image we saved earlier right here. Now select inpaint, but listen closely. Choose inpaint only plus llama. Don't choose global harmonious this time. The later would alter our base image, which we do not want. Ensure control net weight is set to 1 with the control mode set to control net is more important. Set the resize mode to resize and fill. Failing to do so could lead to strange images. Let's hit render. In certain instances removing the prompt might be beneficial. I suggest trying it with the prompt initially. Out of all these images, this one here stands out the most. Don't hesitate to further experiment with this. It's time to take our resolution to the next level. We need to switch the tab to a resize by. Here you will adjust the scale between 1.5 and 2 depending on the capabilities of your graphics card. Personally, I opt for a setting of 2 on my 4080. We still keep the denoising strength to 0.9 and yes, this is still correct. In our control net tab, uncheck the upload independent control image option. And this time we need inpaint global harmonious instead of llama. Experiment with the weight between 0.3 and 0.6 and set the control mode to balanced. Should the image details still not meet your expectations, consider increasing the denoising strength to a 1. And if that doesn't suffice, reduce the control weight further to 0.3 or even lower, but be wary of going below 0.25. In my experience, dropping beneath the threshold can lead to severely distorted images. Let's hit render. The details in the image already look great, it even fixed our hand problem. But wait until you see the last step, because so far you have seen nothing. Remember the tile model we downloaded earlier? Well, now it's time to use it. But first a quick detour to ensure we've got all the necessary tools in place because we missed some. For the next step it's important that you turn off Restore Faces. It's a feature that is hidden by default in newer versions of Automatic 11.11. So just go to Settings and here type Quick. This should filter to the Quick Settings list. Here type Face and select Face Restoration. Hit Apply Settings and Reload UI. Now this checkbox up here should appear. This doesn't make any sense now, but I will explain in a moment why you need to uncheck this for our next step. Head over to our extension tab, click on Available and Load From. Then type Ultimate. And here install the Ultimate SD Upscale extension. I can't wait to demonstrate this incredible upscale script to you. Only thing we need now is to download the 4x UltraSharp Upscaler. Go to this URL. After downloading it, you put it in your Stable Diffusion Web UI folder under Models and here under ESR GAN. And there you put it in. Now, are you ready for this mind-blowing last step? It's finally time to decrease your denoising strength to 0.3 or even lower. This is trial and error and dependent on your checkpoint and LoRa's. With your enabled control net unit, click on Tiles slash Blur. 
preprocessor should say tile resample and for checkpoint it should say controlnet v11 tile. Make sure the weight is set to 1 and that controlnet is more important is set. Now we put our freshly installed upscale script to use. Go down here and select from the script the ultimate SD upscale. Don't confuse it with the SD upscale. Set the target size type to scale from image size and the scale to two times. Below, under upscaler, select the 4x ultra sharp we just downloaded. For the tile widths, you should go as high as your graphics card is able to manage. I usually go with 768, but why do we do that? Because we do what's called a tile upscale. So we want as little tiles as possible because it means less seams, which gives a clearer image in general. That is also the reason we turned the restore faces off, because otherwise we will end up with images like this instead of that. Now it's time to be amazed. Let's render. This could take quite some time. Take a moment to appreciate this masterpiece. Truly splendid, isn't it? The intricacies, the depth. It's clear, we've outdone ourselves in crafting this gem. Yet, if you're looking to take your workflow to even greater heights, I highly recommend checking out our next video.